In the last episode of this Holden 308 build, I was struggling to get enough lash or any kind of lash at all on um, a lot of the valves on this entire head actually. It seemed like the standard pushrod length was just too long and also I could not get the roller of the rocker tracking nicely on the end of the valve stem without some kind of shim sitting under the, um, the rocker. But I've found a solution. So there were three goals that I wanted to get to with this valve train. Um, first goal was to solve that zero lash problem um, that I was having on some of the valves. Second goal was to have really good movement of the tip, the roller tip of the rocker on the end of the valve stem so it wasn't sort of too much one way or too much the other. And the third goal was to use about half of the rocker's adjuster um, range so that I would have um, some more range left in either direction for future adjustments if I need it. So I have since uh, come back to the shed and tested um, a few different uh, washer thicknesses uh, as shims under the rockers. And I also tested different push, push rod lengths um, using this adjustable push rod. And Gary, my Holden mentor, he also came over that day and just, just double checked what I was doing and also gave me a really easy technique for how to uh, get the, uh, the lifters on the right part of the cam lobes to really make sure that you are adjusting each, uh, each valve correctly. So it only took a few iterations actually to get the right combination of pushrod length and shim thickness. Um, and what I ended up settling on was um, this washer was the one that worked really well and it was, it was kind of, oh, I can't quite remember. It might've been 46, 47, 48 thou thick, uh, which actually is so close to the thickness of the shims I know I can get from Yellow Terra. And the pushrod length that ended up working best in combination with that shim was pretty much spot on 8.55 inches um, from tip um, to tip. Now, I'm pretty sure there are some pushrod lengths that are measured as gauge length, which I don't quite understand, but I did make sure that I, I checked with um, Crow Cams, actually, where I ended up getting the new pushrods from, um, how they, their lengths were measured, and they were from tip to tip. And Crow Cams actually make pushrods in um, increments of 50 thou, so that was perfect. I could get exactly what I needed. So the parts that I ordered was from Yellow Terra. I got their shims, which are 47 thou, perfect. Um, and I wanted to get these instead of using uh, washers because the washers had a fair amount of variability in their thickness from washer to washer, but also the machining's quite rough. Um, and I just didn't like the idea of adding that variability in under the rockers. So yeah, these are properly machined shims and that's what's going in. And I also got a new set of push rods for, um, which, which are the 8.55 inch length. These are 110 thou wall thickness and different to the ones that came in my cam kit, they have the 210 ball end chrome ollie push rods. Now the shims, were $28 for that set, but because Yellow Terra, I think they must be located in country Victoria or somewhere, the shipping is not cheap, so I th the shipping stung actually. That was $40 just to ship that little package. Uh, and so that adds uh, about $68 to the cost of the build of this Holden 308. And then the new push rods, these, because they're in their um, variable length range, you buy them individually, not as a set of 16. So that added up to um, $304 for 16 of those and $20 shipping. So another $324 added to the Holden 308 rebuild cost. 
What I do have, though, is the old set of push rods that came with my cam kit. Uh, so these are standard length for a Holden 308. Um, well, pretty close to it. The standard length is 8.686 and these are 8.7 inches. Um, they're super duty push rods. I think these have a wall thickness of 80 thou and they have the, um, I think it's a 100 and 180 degree end on them. I'm not sure either matters for the kind of build that I'm doing with this thing, but I am hoping I can um, sell these since I haven't, haven't really used them. So here's how it all comes together. Um, the shims are in. And the rocker adjusters, um, let me just show you, they have, if I get the lock nut up flush, they have about six turns of um, full travel. So that's fully backed out. Maybe I'll do it that way so we can see the top of the... So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, well, almost six turns um, of travel across the range of that um, adjuster. So I was aiming to have about two and a half to three turns totally taken up on the adjuster to remove all the lash and then add that half turn of preload. So this is just taking up the, the thread of the rocker bolts. So you can see I have still got loads and loads of movement now with, um, with these new push rod lengths. I'll tighten them down. And the, the lifters are pretty close to um, sitting on the base circle of the can. So tightening those up last time took out all of the lash out of the intake on cylinder one. So still plenty there. So this method that Gary told me about for um, getting each valve um, or each lifter on the base circle to check the and, and, it, and, and set the lash on each valve is exhaust opening intake closing EOIC. So what that means is that as the exhaust is opening, you set the lash on the intake. And when the intake is closing, you set the lash on the exhaust. So that's intake opening. And there's exhaust opening. So that means that this lifter should be on the base circle of the can and I can set the lash on the intake. So the number of turns that it takes to let me just adjust that so you can see it. The number of turns that it's going to take to just remove that lash, let's see, is going to be... This one's a little tight. There we go. It's so one. We still have lash. This is two. just about got rid of it a little bit there still there so that's um, not quite two and a half turns to get there and then for um, for this engine a half turn for preload and then the, the lock comes down so there's still a couple of threads left sticking out of there. Now this intake was the worst of all across the head for um, for, <laughs> for having zero lash um, with the old setup. But now that, that's looking pretty good. 
So now I want to set the exhaust, so I need that on intake closing. So there's the intake opening and there it is closing. So now I know the exhaust is on the base circle of the cam. It's one, two, still plenty there. So that's almost um, almost three turns to get rid of. Let's say two and three quarter turns to get rid of the lash on the exhaust. So then another half turn, and then the lock nut comes down. So it's not too different how much thread is still left on both of those. So there we go. So that's been a lesson for me, not just how to <laughs> check and set lash, but also the lesson is um, when you buy a cam kit uh, with, you know, your cam, your springs, lifters and push rods, you think you're saving money. But um, in the end, I've ended up spending more. And Scotty has been going through the same problem with rebuilding his um, LS1 as well, where the push rods that came with his cam kit aren't quite the right length that he needs for his engine. So who knows why? I mean, I could delve into this and figure out exactly why I needed non-standard length um, push rods. Maybe uh, these posts, the rocker posts have been machined down in the past, maybe the rockers have something a bit, I don't even know how old these rockers are, something different about their design, there could be something, some variation in the length of the valve stems, uh, maybe even the base circle of the cam is a little bit higher than the cam that was in, in it previously. I do know that the previous owner of this engine did have a little bit of an issue because he had shimmed the rockers but he was using standard length push rods so that was working. So yeah, I don't know, I guess all these variations add up. So I'm happy enough with this valve train now. I'm gonna take the head off and turn the engine upside down because the next step will be checking uh, main and rod bearing clearances. Stay tuned.